Hello, this is Brother Cromer from the Math Department at BYU-Idaho. And these videos I will be covering simple linear regression. And so here's the outline for these videos. First I'll cover the difference between a response and an explanatory variable. Then I'll talk about the linear regression equation. Then I'll follow it up with prediction, and that's prediction using the linear regression equation. And then I'll wrap it up with fitting a line on a scatter plot. So first of all, the difference between a of explanatory and a response variable. An explanatory variable is used to predict the response variable. And other ways to describe the explanatory variable is also the independent variable or the x variable. Now the response variable is also referred to the dependent variable or the y variable. Okay? So if you're going back to these here, the x and the y, the x variable would be the variable that's, that's shown when we get the scatter plots later on the horizontal axis and the y variable is is the vertical axis okay now example one is we want to predict body length of a crocodile using the head length so the explanatory variable would be the head length because that's what we're using to predict and the response variable would be the body length because that's what we're trying to predict so we're using head length to predict body length and so therefore the explanatory variable is head length the response variable is body length now, if you want to, please stop the video and determine uh, this example. Does the number of powerboat registrations affect the number of manatee killed? What's the explanatory variable and what's the response variable? Well, the explanatory variable is the number of powerboat registrations because that's what we're using to predict, and the response variable is the number of manatee killed. That's what we're, that's what we're predicting. That's what we're, we're trying to predict this based off of the powerboat registrations. Okay. So the next item is the linear regression equation. Okay. This is the general form of a linear regression equation where it's basically y hat, which is our predicted y, is equal to beta naught, where beta naught, or excuse me, b naught, where b naught is the y-intercept, plus b1 times x, where b1 is the slope. This should look, if you've taken algebra, which most of you have, which is, is similar to the y equals mx plus b. It's uh, m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. In this case, we write it out a little bit differently in statistics where b naught is the y-intercept and b1 is the slope. Okay? Now the y-intercept is where the regression line or the line intersects the line where x is equal to zero. And sometimes it's appropriate to ter interpret. And I'll go through a couple of examples of that in a moment. And the slope by definition is x increases by one unit y increases or decreases on average based on the estimated value of the slope. So whatever this number is, so say the number is two and a half, if x increases by one, then y increases, increases because it's positive on average base, uh, or increases on average by two and a half. Okay? So let's go through a couple of examples of this here. So this is where we have the this is the crocodile data where we have, we're comparing, we're predicting body length based off of head length. Okay, so when we when we calculate it, what we do is we get a y, we get a predicted y, which is equal to negative 18.274 plus 7.660 times x. Okay, now you can calculate this either using Excel or SPSS. Here's an example of an Excel output. This is similar to what you would see, or SPSS output, similar to what you'd see in Excel where it's under this part here where you would get your y-intercept and where you get your slope. Okay, So in this case, this is where, and so we put it out in the equation, the general equation is y hat is equal to b naught plus b1 times x. b naught is negative 18.274, b1, which is our slope, is 7.660. So how do we interpret that? Well, where head length is equal to zero, body length is equal to negative 18.274. Well, this is it would be inappropriate to interpret since you can't get a negative body length, and a head length is never equal to zero. So outside and and typically we we only uh, use the y-intercept um, if or we we have the y-intercept for our equation. But in terms of interpreting it, it's only interpretable if it's within our range of data, or if it's close to our range of data. But in this case, it's not. And and this is hopefully this is intuitive that this would make sense to interpret. However, the slope we can very easily interpret as the head length increases by one centimeter, the body length increases on average by the 7.660. Okay. Now let's go through with another example here. So manatee and power boats. The linear regression equation is as follows. So this is what we get here. This is where we get our y-intercept, and this is where we get our slope. Okay. 
Um, and so what we say here, how do we interpret that? So maybe what you do is stop the video and figure out how we would interpret the y-intercept and how we would interpret the slope. Well, the y-intercept, since the number of power bones is zero, the number of men to kill is negative, that can't happen. So this would be an inappropriate, this would be inappropriate to determine, to, to interpret since you cannot get a, a negative number from the manatee killed. But the slope we can interpret, so as the number of powerboat registered increases by one, but this is scaled to, when one goes up it's really a thousand, a thousand powerboats, the number of manatee killed on average increases by 0 0.129. Okay? So now let's talk about predictions. So we can take this linear regression equation, y hat equals b naught plus b1 times x, and we can predict something. Okay, we can use, for instance, let's use the example of the body length of a crocodile when the head length is equal to 60 centimeters. If we use this equation that we got before, and if we have a head length of 60, we can put the 60 in for x and solve for y. And if we solve for y, or y hat, which is our predicted y, we would have a predicted, we would have a predicted body length. Okay, so if we, for instance, if you use this in Excel or, or SPSS, you would get a number of 441.332. If you did this on the calculator, you'd get a slightly different number, but it's, but it's fairly close. Now, um, just here's a visual of this. So the head length, so here's, here's a scatter plot here, where this is our head length, which is 60 centimeters. And so this here is what's called our prediction line. This is the line. This, this, this is the equation, that's, and it's represented by this line right here. So at 60, we should expect, uh, or we should predict, we should have a predict, or we can predict y to be about 441, as you can see on this graph. It's about, four, it's, it is at 441 at the line, okay? So now here's, go through another example. Predict humanity killed in a year, given that there are 800,000 powerboats registered. So if we put in, so here's, here is the regression formula, y hat is equal to negative 42.542 plus 0 0.129 times x. All we have to do now is we put, if we plug this into, into uh, Excel or SPSS, we can get a formula of about 60.788. We get the result, excuse me, of 60.788. So we'd round that up to where about 61 manatee would be killed if 800 powerboats would be registered. Reason why we put in 800 is since every time uh, uh, num it goes up by one here, it's really a thousand that it goes up. Okay, if you notice down here in the in the um, in the labeling for the x-axis for the power boats. But if we put this in this in the calculator, we would get a relatively close number to 60.658. Okay. So now the last thing I want to mention here is fitting a line on a scatter plot. And so this is just. Uh, those of you who have, you can do this both in Excel, and those of you who use Excel can get the instructions from the from the, uh, the online textbook or from your instructor. But basically, what this is is that this equation here is represented, as I alluded to earlier, uh, is represented by this line. So this is what's called the predicted line, and so we can use typically with and within a range of data, we can predict in this example the head length. Uh, we can, excuse me, predict the body length based off the head length. So as, so this line is, as our head length increases, so does the body length. And it increases by, on average, when, it go, when the head length goes up by one, the body length goes up on average by the amount of the slope, which is, what was it again? It was 7 point, it was 7.66, okay? And the same thing over here with the, with the, uh, with the scatter plot for manatee versus powerboat. So as we increase our, as we increase our um, n the number of power boats by a thousand, the number of manatee kill on average is, is 0 0.129, and so it's gradually increasing. So both of these, if you go, if you remember from the previous lesson, these are both positive linear relation, positive and strong linear relationships. We 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 needed to get R uh, to get to see how strong it is, but they look fairly strong without looking at R. But it would be it would be wise to check check R to see how strong our relationship is. We know it's positive and it's likely to be linear, but we should check to see how strong it is using R. Uh, so that concludes uh, the video dealing with simple linear regression. If you have any questions, please speak to your uh, instructor or to one of your TAs.